On March 6th, 1836, the culmination of a heroic stand occurred. Attacking just before dawn, Mexican General Santa Ana and his highly trained army of 4,000 defeated the band of 200 hardy Texan fighters inside the Alamo. The battle was a turning point in the Texas Revolution against Mexico. It inspired great hope in all Texans, enabling them to gain their independence from Mexico. The stand at the Alamo epitomized human courageousness and patriotism. In the 1800s, Americans began a steady territorial growth, resulting from a popular concept known as Manifest Destiny. Americans believed that it was God's will for them to spread their country from sea to shining sea. Beginning in the 1820s, Americans settled in the Tejas region of Mexico. This expansion is often confused as an outgrowth of Manifest Destiny. What might look like a sort of Manifest Destiny in American history uh, over Texas is it's not that at all, it's just the way things turned out. Americans settled in Texas because it was a land of second chances, a place to start a new life with free land and few obligations. Coming from America, the Texans highly valued their freedom, and when Mexican President Santa Ana abolished Mexico's Constitution of 1824, making himself dictator, a revolution was born. The fight for Texan independence began in October 1835. Four months later, a Texan lieutenant colonel named William Barrett Travis arrived with reinforcements at an old Spanish mission turned fort called the Alamo. Soon after, Travis gained official command of the garrison. The defenders of the Alamo desired independence. On March 3, 1836, Alamo commander Lieutenant Colonel Travis wrote a letter declaring, Let the convention go and make a declaration of independence, and we will understand, the whole world will understand what we are fighting for. The letters of William Barrett Travis make it clear how much he and his men are willing to sacrifice. In a letter to the president of the Texan Independence Convention, Travis wrote, They have demanded surrender at their discretion or this garrison should be put to sword. Their threats have no influence on me or my men, but to make all fight with desperation and that high-souled courage which characterizes a patriot who is willing to die in defense of his country's liberty and his own honor. Travis knew how important the Alamo was to Texas. It is the key of Texas from the interior, remarked Travis in one letter. Without a footing here, the enemy can do nothing against us. Another famous soldier at the Alamo was Colonel Jim Bowie, creator of the fearsome Bowie knife. Bowie also noted the importance of the Alamo, saying that he and the others have come to the solemn resolution that we would rather die in these ditches and give it up to the enemy. Perhaps the best known soldier in the Alamo was Davy Crockett. David Crockett's status as an American folk hero led to his election in both the Tennessee Congress and the United States House of Representatives. However, after a failed re-election attempt in 1835, a defeated Crockett said to the crowd, You may all go to hell, and I will go to Texas. Crockett was dedicated to the cause of Texan freedom. On January 9, 1836, Crockett wrote his final letter from Texas. In it, Crockett raved about Texas as the garden spot of the world. He also stated, I had rather be in my present situation than to be elected a seat in Congress for that. His comments at the Alamo appreciated Crockett. In one letter, Lieutenant Colonel Travis said, The Honorable David Crockett was seen at all points animating the men to do their duty. Crockett, along with the other defenders of the Alamo, could have escaped their certain death at any time by slipping out of the Alamo's gates and through the enemy lines under the cover of darkness. However, the gallant defenders of the Alamo chose not to do so. On the 23rd of February, General Santa Ana began the siege of the Alamo. His Mexican force numbered around 4,000. From the nearby tower of San Fernando Cathedral, the Mexicans raised a red flag of no quarter. This symbol meant that this would be a fight to the death, no prisoners would be taken. On the 24th of February, Travis penned his famous letter to the people of Texas and all the Americans in the world. In his letter, Travis stated, I am besieged by a thousand or more of the Mexicans. The enemy has demanded surrender. I have answered the demand with a cannon shot. I shall never surrender or retreat. Then, I call on you in the name of liberty, patriotism, and everything dear to the American character to come to our aid. If this call is neglected, 
I am determined to sustain myself as long as possible and die like a soldier who never forgets what is due to his honor and that of his country, victory or death. Only 32 men answered Travis's desperate plea for help. On the afternoon of March 5th, Travis called an assembly of all the defenders at the Alamo. He made a passionate speech, offering each man the choice between fighting to the death or trying to escape. Legend dictates that it was during this assembly that Travis drew a line in the sand with his sword and told all who would stay and defend the Alamo to cross over the line. Although there is no evidence to prove this legend, it is likely that Lt. Col. Travis gave his troops the opportunity to leave if they so desired. In the pre-dawn hours of March 6th, 1836, the Mexican soldiers surrounding the Alamo began to prepare for battle. At approximately 5.30 a.m., General Santa Ana gave the order to attack. Immediately, Travis was among his men. Come on, boys, he shouted. Mexicans are upon us and we'll give them hell. As the Mexicans entered firing range, the Texans wreaked havoc among the enemy troops. At close range, the Texan cannons were devastating. However, the sheer number of Mexicans soon began to overwhelm the Texans. Using ladders, the Mexicans swarmed over the Alamo's walls. Travis was one of the very first to fall, defending the north wall. As the battle inside the Alamo courtyard and on the walls began to intensify, the Alamo defenders fell back into the chapel and barracks. The Texan defenders were still in control of the situation, but they could see the battle crumbling around them. Meanwhile, David Crockett and his boys had begun to defend a small interior courtyard known as the Little Fort. Here, the vastly outnumbered Tennesseans fought hand-to-hand -hand with the Mexican enemy. The brutal melee that occurred led to the death of the heroic members of the Tennessee Mounted Volunteers. It is widely regarded as a place of Crockett's demise, although that is a subject of much controversy. According to the diary of a Mexican officer named Jose Enrique de la Peña, David Crockett was one of the seven men who survived the battle. De La Pena stated that Santa Ana ordered Crockett's execution. They thrust themselves forward with swords and hen and fell upon this unfortunate, defenseless man just as a tiger leaps upon his prey. The validity of Pena's writings is questioned and there are fierce supporters of both death scenarios. It is possible that the mystery of David Crockett's death will never be resolved. When dealing with the stand taken at the Alamo, the other side must be remembered. In Latin America, the brave Mexican soldiers who died there are honored. Many were raw recruits who above all were loyal to the country they loved, and were simply fighting against what they believed was an unjust rebellion. They should not be forgotten. It is important to remember that Americans were not alone in the Texas Rebellion. A great number of native Tejanos were involved in the revolution and in the Battle of the Alamo. Rebellion in Texas was not a unique case in Mexico. Pieces of the country are defying the government in Mexico City, and one of them is Texas, and since it's on the U.S. border, uh, and since the U.S. doesn't want the English or the French there, they do what they can to pull it in. Every man at the Alamo fought for a common cause, to escape the unjust rule of Santa Ana and free their region of tyranny and unrest. Although the independence of Texas was declared during the siege of the Alamo, and the men were not aware of it, the men knew that if they died, they would die for independence. Essentially, the Texans all wanted their own country, but they could live in peace without fear from Santa Ana. The Alamo resulted directly in the final victory over the Mexicans. The Battle of the Alamo will always be remembered in United States history and around the world. It is a story of perseverance, heroism, gallantry, courage, steadfastness, and valor. The men there died for a common cause, and they died willingly to accomplish it. Against unimaginable odds, the defenders of the Alamo took a stand against what they believed was unjust. They took a stand for freedom. Throughout the rest of history, Whenever the independence of Texas, or the American annexation of Texas, is discussed, it will be directly linked to the Alamo. And wherever people take a stand for liberty, they will remember the Alamo.